Hello everyone, as you know, I am Paul, your eHobby guy, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at this DDS signal generator, also known as a function generator. It costs in the range of $12 to $13. It can also come in kit form where you build all of this by yourself. We're going to go over its complete usage, and of course, the two channel outputs here. There's also a trim pot here that allows some adjustment. I'll show you how to get it powered up and fully operational. So let's jump Jump right in. As always, I'm going to jump in here first and just take a look at the workmanship of the board and see how it fares. The quality of this board looks very, very good. This solder joint right here looks like it's splattered a little bit, but it definitely still has a good solder point. There's also a little side drain here. Other than these two very minor things, everything looks very, very good as far as this is concerned. This requires a plus 5 volts, a plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts around a common ground. In particular, these voltages come with every computer power supply. In a previous video, of course, I did get this ATX computer power supply breakout board. This was only $8. I went over it in great detail. I will link the video to it in the description below. As you can see here, we get the 5 volt, the ground, the plus 12 volt, the ground, and the minus 12 volt. So 5, 12, ground, and minus 12. These two grounds are actually the same. All of these grounds are tied into the same ground so for this board we're looking at this 5 volts this 12 volts this ground and a negative 12 volts here and I just have it plugged into a regular PC ATX power supply. Again, I will link the video for this build in the description down below. You should really check it out if you haven't seen it. That's the power all hooked up directly to my power supply right here. All right, so now we will just uh, we'll get power. Let me flip the power switch here on the power supply. Okay, we have our first LCD here. One thing I do want to go over is this trim pot here. And this trim pot adjusts contrast of the LCD screen. And so just in case you power yours up and it looks like you have nothing on your screen, the first thing you should do is look at this trim pot and go full scale on it and see what you come up with. So you could be something like that or you could be the other extreme, something like that. And so you adjust it to where it's just pleasing to you where you can read and there's a nice contrast is right about there I just want to zoom in on the buttons here for a second and so we have six buttons here here we go that's a better angle the six buttons that we're looking at are right left up down this is the start button and all the way over here is the reset button and we'll go over the use of these right now but I just wanted you to see up close up down start right left these are the five buttons that you will be using the most and there will be a reset of course if you do want to just get reset back to where you began looking at the screen here what you've got on the screen here is the selection of the waveform and there is a little variant on that that we'll get to right now we have random noise and that's turned off and i'll scroll through just to take a look at all of the screens first at the main level and show you all of the different waveforms that we can get to and use and then we will move on to looking at the actual waveforms we're going to use the up and the down button to scroll to the different screens so let's move up and we get the frequency step i'm going to take a closer look at frequency step in a minute so we'll get back to this guy let's scroll ECG electrocardiogram this is a type of waveform we'll take a look at closer so right now we had random noise and ECG as waveforms. Random noise isn't really a form, it's random, but we'll continue. Reverse sawtooth. And you see the frequency is set by default to 60 hertz. We'll take a look at changing that and making it anything you want in a minute. A triangle wave. And I'm just scrolling up through all of these. Of course we have a sine wave high speed one megahertz and what this is is a one megahertz square wave the frequency on all of the other waveforms is limited and we'll take a look at the specs in a little while as well this high speed that's why they're calling it high speed because this frequency of one megahertz is much larger than what is allowed for the other waveforms i believe we're capped out around the 64 kilohertz on the other waveforms we'll take a closer look as soon as we hook it up to the scope and scrolling onwards, here we just got back to the beginning, random noise. Scrolling really quickly, random noise, frequency step, which is not a waveform. It's what we're going to modify the frequency with. 
And then we get to ECG, sawtooth, triangle, square wave, sine wave, high speed 1 megahertz, and random noise back to the beginning. Now that we looked at all of the different types, let's just go into one of them, sine wave. I like a sine wave. Now the default is 60 hertz, and so the question arises: can we modify this 60 hertz and change the frequency that's coming out of the channel? And the answer of course is yes, we can definitely do that. As you can see right here, it is turned off, and to turn it on, we just press the enter, the start button right in the middle of this plus here. So now you can see it's turned on. A sine wave is being generated and is being sent out the DDS out output. This other output is the high speed output and only applies to that high speed 1 megahertz signal that we saw earlier. So there's only one thing that comes out this whole channel that's the high speed 1 megahertz. All the other waveforms come out the DDS out channel. So I'm going to turn it back off because we have nothing hooked up to it. Now you can see here the frequency is 60 hertz so we can use the left and the right buttons to modify the frequency right here so I'm just going to hit the the right button and you can see it went up by a hundred went up by another hundred another hundred another hundred by pressing the right button if we press the left button we can bring it back down it can't go negative we're trying to subtract a hundred from 60 it doesn't do anything just as a side note on the frequency step screen that's where we set the amount that it increases or decreases on the signal that it's putting out. So we'll go back there and I'll change it to, let's say, 10 hertz. Because let's say I wanted to get this to 75 hertz or 91 hertz, some oddball number. I'll go through that one time so you can see the function. To do that first, uh, we'll just say 91. So I, want, I need to add 30 to this. So I'm going to change the frequency step to 10 because the frequency steps are 1, 10, 100, 1000, and so on. So I'll change it to 10 to quickly get to 90 and then I'll go back and change it to 1 so that I can add 1 hertz to the 90 when I get there. So let's move to the frequency step screen. There it is, 100 hertz. The left button brings it down, the right button brings it up. 10,000, 100, 1, 10. It looks like we were getting a little switch bouncing there because I went from 100 to 1 two different occasions. So we'll accept that and now I'm going to scroll back to my sine wave. There we go and it's at 60 so I'm going to hit the right button here. 70, 80, 90. Now I'm going to go back up to the frequency step and change this to 1. Now we're down to 1 hertz. Back to my sine wave. 90 and I'm going to hit the right button to increase that by 1. Now I have 91 hertz. And so that's all you have to do with these five buttons over here to modify the frequency. Now before we get to the scope, we have two adjustment knobs right here. And the two things that these adjust are amplitude and DC offset. Now the amplitude ranges from zero, I believe, all the way up to plus or minus 10 volts. The DC offset is from plus 5 volt to minus 5 volt. And you might get some clipping there. Let me hook this on right here and we'll get the other hand hooked up to the scope and we'll see what we get just something to make note of here I was just changing the frequency and I wanted to come back down again so if I want the frequency to come down I can press obviously now the frequency step is 100 so you can see it's coming down by 100 but if you press and hold it will fast scroll downward that's just one little plus about this thing that fast scrolling for the frequency so I'll just go back down to 60 there we go okay I'm hooked up here uh, with my cable I'm hooked in here to the, into my DDS out I have my reverse sawtooth it's turned off we'll just get into the turned on state right there now one thing I've noticed it seems like switch bouncing on these buttons because I did press it you hear a click and it happened again there. I think it's going on and off. There we go. We just got it on. And so you can see reverse sawtooth, 60 hertz is on. And this is our reverse sawtooth on the scope here. Now one thing of note here, just to, to double check, you can see right here the 60 hertz, 60 hertz here. Now what I wanted to show you was the DC offset. Now if I offset it downwards, I'm getting past the lower limit. And this is the clipping that I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to bring the offset back up, approximately centered. Same thing would happen if I go above the upper limit. You can see the clipping on the upper limit. There we go. So I'll bring it approximately down to the center here. And that's a reverse sawtooth at 60 hertz. So I'm going to just turn that back off. We're going to scroll to the next one. Sawtooth, which is the reverse, obviously. <laughs> 
Let's the sawtooth, let's turn that off. Scroll to the next triangle. Let's see what our triangle looks like. And that's the triangle. Let's move on to the next waveform. I'm going to turn this off. Scroll to the next square wave, which is pretty straightforward. There's our square wave. Again, exactly 60 hertz. 60 hertz here. 260 hertz. And you can see that it's 260 hertz here. The frequency has become much greater. And there's our sine wave. There's not much to say about it. It's a perfect and nice clean sine wave. High speed 1 megahertz. Remember for this, we have to move it over to the high speed output. Let's turn it on. That is it turned on. So let's change horizontal scale. There we go. 999.999 kilohertz. The random noise waveform. Turn that on. There we go. So you can see it's, it's a very scrambly. It's just some random stuff. It does look digital. I'm just going to take a single shot there and you can see that it's digital a waveform obviously coming out of the microprocessor so with random noise we do not specify the frequency because it's going to be random ecg let's turn that on there we go let's change our horizontal scale and that looks like a very good ekg or ecg electrocardiogram reverse sawtooth so we're back to the beginning again that's the reverse sawtooth there are all the waveforms that come out of it so at this point, you might be asking yourself, why would you need waveforms such as these? Well, with waveforms like this, you can actually create sound. And you could put the output of this to a speaker. Okay, so here I have an ECG at 1 hertz. I have this speaker here. I made this cable, again, from an RCA cable with an RCA to BNC adapter. You can see I took the outer braid and I just put one jumper cable on it and the inner center core, another jumper cable on that. The outer braid, I'm going to put that on the tip. What happens when we turn it on? That's a pretty noisy, uh, crackly heartbeat one per second i'm going to increase the frequency let's just go up to 25 and turn it back on whoa so you can see the difference there that's 25 heartbeats a second i don't think anybody would be able to do that for very long and live <laughs> so uh let's just scroll on to the other waveforms and you'll see the different sounds we'll play around with it a little bit reverse sawtooth at 25 hertz so down to one and you can hear that one second click where it reaches its upper limit. 41. Different effect on the sound there. There we go, 114. Again, you can hear different sounds if you play around with it. You can generate sounds with a function generator like this. So let's move on to the next. And uh, this is just a regular sawtooth, which will not be... Yeah, it's not too different from a regular sawtooth, it's just reversed. There is a difference, of course, because they're different waveforms. Triangle, again, probably won't be too different to the, uh, the sawtooth in reversal. Uh, that's interesting. 32. You get some alien sounds. Again, I'll just go all the way down. There we got a little uh, music beat. Square. So let's uh, go down to one one hertz here and see what a square wave sounds like. There we go. So every second we're getting one tick. We know what a 60 hertz hum sounds like just from our AC mains. Oftentimes there's interference, but let's hear it on a square wave. Yep. That's what it sounds like. Uh, I'm familiar with that interference. So let's move up to a sine wave, 60 hertz. Yeah, it's very similar. Again, let's do one. Yeah, there we go. So you can see the variety. You can see the variety of sounds that you can generate by playing around with the frequency and the waveform. So that's about it. All of the waveforms and the frequencies can be modified. Obviously, from here, you can get sound effects out of them. You can create your own sound effects. In fact, if you create your own waveforms, you will get different sounds. You can output them to any speaker, such as this. Now, as I was saying earlier, I do have a project coming up that I am using a sine wave direct output. I'm going to use this module. And I'm actually can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. It will be my next, certainly within the next two or three videos, I'm going to be using this in conjunction with some other apparatus. At this time, I really
really do appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section down below. I'm on social media, so follow me on social media. Click the circle with my picture in it to subscribe to this channel right now. I really do appreciate your support. Also check out my website, which is really just reflects this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.